solving compound inequalities and interval notation. So first, compound inequalities are generally seen as two what we call simple inequalities, what you've probably seen before in algebra, but they're combined with the word or or the word and. If we see a compound inequality with the word or, what we must understand is that a value that satisfies at least one of the conditions, one of the simple inequalities, is considered a solution. However, if the word and is seen, only a value that satisfies both conditions is considered to be a solution of the compound inequality. So we've got to remember, or, at least one, and need both. So here's a, a simple example. Is x equals 5 a solution of the compound inequality 3x is less than 10 or x plus 1 is greater than 3? So this statement That is a compound inequality. All right, so notice it is two simple statements, two simple inequalities combined with the word, in this case, or. Now, since it's combined with the word or, what we need to understand is we must satisfy at least one condition to be a solution. So we check, is x equals 5 a solution? Well, 3 times 5, is this less than 10? Is 15 less than 10? All right, so that comes back false. 15 is not less than 10. Checking the other one. Is 5 plus 1 greater than 3? Well, 6 is greater than 3. This comes back true. So, for the word or, remember we only need one to be satisfied, right? At least one part must be satisfied. So is x equals 5 a solution of this? Well, since we only need one to be a solution, we would say yes. x equals 5 is a solution. It satisfied at least one condition. All right, well, now let's look at the inequality. Is x equals 5 a solution of 3x is less than 10 and x plus 1 is greater than 3? Well, we know that this comes back false, and this comes back true. Is x equals 5 a solution of the and inequality? No, because not both were satisfied. So here's a, a sample question or exercise that we might see related to a compound inequality. Here we're asked to solve, graph the solution, and write the solution in interval notation. We're given the uh, compound inequality, 2x plus 1 is less than 3, and x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 5. So what we generally do is we solve each of the pieces individually. All right, so if 2x plus 1 is less than 3, I'll subtract 1. So 2x is less than 2, and then I'll divide by 2, and x is less than 1. Go to the other piece. We just need to add 1 to both sides here. And so x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Let's bring down the and. So we need x is less than 1 and x is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, so what I like to do at this point is draw my number line. All right, and what I'll do is I'll put the important numbers on the number line. So I'll put these boundaries, 1 and negative 4. So I'll put negative 4 here and 1 here in their correct numerical order, of course. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a point in each region. So basically, those two boundaries, the negative 4 and the 1, have created now three regions that I can test. So if I choose a number over in this first region, let me call this region 1, if I, if I test a point here, this number, is it less than 1? Sure, it's less than 1. And 
is it greater than negative 4? So it's less than 1, but it's not greater than negative 4. This point would come back false for the compound inequality. It does not satisfy the and. Remember, and, you've got to satisfy both pieces. So now I test a point in here between negative 4 and 1. Is this number, is it less than 1? Check. Is it greater than negative 4? Check. This point would come back true. It satisfied both pieces. All right, now we check the point over here. The third point, is this number, whatever it is, is it less than 1? No. Is it greater than 4, negative 4? Yes. Does it satisfy the compound inequality? It does not. It comes back false. So now, to graph the solution on the interval, uh, on the on the number line, what we do is we shade wherever it came back true. All right, so I shade that region of the number line. Now, since it's strictly less than 1, what we do is we put a parenthesis at the 1 in the direction of shading. And then for the greater than or equal to, if we have the or equal to, we use a bracket again in the direction of shading. So then the interval notation solution, we go from left to right. The interval would be from negative 4, comma, to 1. We would put a bracket on the negative 4 and a parenthesis on the 1. Let's look at another one. 1 minus 2x is greater than 3, or 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 4. Again, let's solve each individually. I will subtract 1 from both sides. So negative 2x is greater than 2, and divide by negative 2. Remember, when you divide on, with an, in, on an inequality by a negative number, you flip the symbol of inequality. So x is less than negative 1. Adding 4 to both sides on the second inequality, I have 2x is greater than or equal to 8. And dividing by 2, x is greater than or equal to 4. So here I have x is less than negative 1, or x is greater than or equal to 4. Again, I'll draw my number line and put my important values here, negative 1 and 4, numerical order. Again, notice that this you know, brings up three regions, region 1, region 2, region 3. So I will now test each of those points, thinking or. All right, so this first point over on the left, is it less than negative 1? Sure, true. I don't even need to check the second point, or the second condition. I don't care if it's greater than 4, because of the or. Remember, or we only need to satisfy one piece. So this came back true. I test the point in, in the middle. Is it less than negative 1? No. Is it greater than 4? No. This comes back false. I test the point to the right in the third region. Is it less than negative 1? No. Is it greater than 4? Yes. It comes back true. Remember, this is an or inequality. We only need to satisfy one of the pieces. Shade where we have true, including the arrows if necessary. And now we write the interval notation. Well, notice in this case we have two separate pieces. So how we take care of this is we write the first interval. Well, wait a second. This number all the way over on the left, we call it negative infinity. Similarly, the piece all the way on the right, we call positive infinity. So we would write from negative infinity to negative 1. Now, the negative 1 needs a parenthesis. The 4 needs a bracket in the direction of shading. Bracket because of the or equal to. Remember, if you have an or equal to, if you have a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to, we use brackets. So we have negative infinity to negative 1. Now, we know we're going to put a parenthesis here on the negative 1. And then if we ever use an infinity or negative infinity in interval notation, 
We also use a parenthesis there. Now the second interval goes from 4 to positive infinity. We would bracket the 4 and we would put a parenthesis on the infinity. And so that looks okay, but we have to connect them somehow. And so we use this symbol that looks like a U to set symbol called union. And so we use the union symbol to connect them. A third example. Solve, graph the solution, write the solution in interval notation. All right, so 7x minus 6 is greater than 0. I'll add 6 to both sides, so 7x is greater than 6. And dividing by 7, x is greater than 6 sevenths. Or, uh, here I'm just going to multiply by negative 2. And so that would give me x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Notice how I flipped the symbol of inequality since I was multiplying by a negative number. So we have x is greater than 6 sevenths or x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Number line. Important values. Uh, 6 sevenths is between 0 and 1, so I'll put 6 sevenths here. Actually, we need a negative 12. I'll put the negative 12 here and I'll put the 6 sevenths here in numerical order. Scale isn't too important here unless your instructor is very particular about it. Alright, so again we have three regions. Region 1, Region 2, Region 3. Region 1, is that number greater than 6 sevenths? No. Is it greater than negative 12? No. Comes back false. Region 2, is that number greater than 6 sevenths? No. Is it greater than negative 12? Yes. Comes back true. Remember, this is an or inequality. We must satisfy only one condition. Interval 3, or part 3, is it greater than 6 sevenths? Yes. That's good enough for me. Shade where it's true. What symbol do we place next to the 12? Well, since it's an or equal to, we would bracket it. And so my interval notation would be bracket negative 12 comma infinity. All right. Here we see what's called a three-part inequality. And basically, if we have a three-part inequality, it's really a special form of an and inequality. So if we have negative 3 is less than or equal to 3x plus 6 is less than 9, we still want to solve for x. And we sort of think, okay, well, what would we do to solve for x if it were, you know, just if we saw, you know, just the 3x plus 6 is less than 9? Well, to isolate the x, we would subtract 6 and divide by 3. Well, we're going to subtract 6, but we have to subtract 6 to all of the pieces. So we have negative 9 is less than or equal to 3x is less than 3, and then divide by 3. Well, we have to divide by 3 to all pieces. So negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. Now, if we look at this, and we think of the number line, well, here's negative 3, and here's 1. The solutions, the x values, are between negative 3 and 1. So we just shade in between negative 3 and 1. We use appropriate symbols. The negative 3 would get a bracket. The 1 would get a parenthesis in the direction of shading. And your interval would be from negative 3 to positive 1. Bracket on the negative 3, parenthesis on the 1.